So I realized I haven't shot a video of my signal collection in quite some time, so I figured for the end of the year here, 2022, I will do another walkthrough video and kind of highlight each signal as I walk by it and try to give a brief background of each light. Starting with this one, this is an Eagle Durasig uh, vehicle signal. This signal, if you're familiar with the southeast Michigan area, served at the intersection of M59 or Hall Road and Shaner on the Sterling Heights, Utica, Shelby Township, Michigan border. I actually remember this signal going in back in 95 when they redid Hall Road to a uh, divided highway. It was originally a two-lane road and they made it a divided highway back in the early 90s there, mid 90s, and uh, these came down I think in 2017 when they did another overhaul of Hall Road. So um, I was actually driving through the intersection at the time these were coming down and I talked to the contractor that was on site and they more or less said take what you want but I got that vibe like you know get out of there so I grabbed this one and I took off so at least I was able to snatch one of these uh, signals that I remember going in service as a kid and obviously now hanging in my display so these signals here on the wall I call my side street display starting on the left here on the top and center of shot is an Eagle Durasig pedestrian signal this is my second signal in my collection um, so I've had this now almost 25 years um, other than cleaning it up and doing some rewiring and changing bulbs out haven't really done much to this signal it's in pretty good shape original condition for the most part next to the Durasig pad is the is my Econolite long groove which is displaying the flashing red ball Michigan left and I don't know if I caught the arrow nope I didn't um, missed the detection zone for that but anyways uh, this long groove econolite was my first restoration project and my third signal in the collection so you can tell it's not the best restoration uh, color of yellow but I think I was probably 13 years old when I repainted this signal it was originally a dark olive green so at some point I'll probably repaint it um, in the pretty distant future but for now for my early teens it's not that bad of a paint finish can't complain too much about it um, the red ball red lens is original to the signal each lens was uh, each uh, color was the same sawtooth here cop TL 4677 uh, lens and I replaced more recently the yellow and green with cop arrows so I can do the Michigan left sequence so that's the uh, long groove Econolite this signal here is the first signal in my collection the first signal I've owned um, which is a trapezoid or what collectors call trapezoid flat back eagles so because of the the, the trapezoid castings in the in the back so kind of a unique design but this was my first signal in my collection it's totally in original shape I want to say it had very little service life because it was in such good shape when I got it and obviously I didn't do anything to it since then other than clean it so it's in pretty pretty decent shape and it's got the original uh, cop 88A Eagle cross flag lenses in it same with this signal here this is an Eagle Lux this signal actually came from a buddy of mine who did the restoration on it so I just kept the I think the paint job is done really well so I just kept it the original uh, or the rest the restored black that he he painted it so but it also has the same Eagle 88A lenses and it's an earlier version it's got the long fins and on the back there's no logos so it's a early model so that's my side street display over here um, I call this wall my main street display so I've got uh, the main and then the side kind of sequencing back and forth this pad up here is an ICC pad with a GE LED countdown insert in it which I repainted black uh, quite a few years ago now I think the original color of that pad was green, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the light next to it is a flashing yellow arrow that I put together out of spare parts. Um, these are Eagle Durasig. This is an Eagle Durasig head, um, but it was made 
wasn't originally in a flashing yellow arrow. I put it together from parts I received at various times and I hung it up and then the nature of polycarbonate, each each housing and visor was a different shade of yellow so I sprayed everything yellow so that it was uniform. So you can see the uh, flashing yellow arrow there in a few seconds we'll get a green arrow. So, and this works in tandem with this doghouse signal over here, which we'll get to. All right, next to the flashing yellow arrow is an Inalight ESB signal head. It's essentially a electronic version of a 3M. So it uses uh, a steerable LED array that's programmable with software to uh, adjust the light beam and it's got through arrows a green and a yellow this signal came with the arrow mask so I I uh, installed them back in for a while I had them out of the signal now I put them back in so it's a pretty cool signal it's got a lot of uh, little bells and whistles in it and circuitry so a lot to uh, kinda tinker with next to the analyte is the infamous flat uh, 3M model 131 I shouldn't say infamous many people like it and uh, you can see it here cycling through this signal is in, in all original shape this was actually my fourth signal so went flat back eagle Durasig ped uh, kind of light long groove and 3M and this 3M as funny as it sounds, was intended to be my last signal in my collection. This was signal number four, and I think I'm up to, what, 14 now? So, obviously, I, the bug didn't go, doesn't go away. <laughs> um, and the only thing I did to this signal was I repainted the visors, because the visors were uh, faded black, almost uh, down to bare metal. Wow, that green is bright. <laughs> And uh, so I repainted the, the visors and the doors yellow and black. So that's the 3M. It's got LEDs in it. So you can see that it doesn't have the fade that the uh, original 150 watt bulbs do. And next to that is a Dialyte prototype signal with integrated LED modules. So this signal was a prototype design that Dialyte developed and uh, started making trial part trial uh, signals and for trade shows and whatnot and I bought one when they were making them then they discontinued them because of the cost and they went back to making uh, regular LED modules so this is a relatively rare signal there's not that many out there there's even fewer yellow ones this one was uh, I ordered it to be yellow with tunnel visors and uh, the ones that were made for trade shows essentially most of them were black so pretty cool there that I have uh, a signal that was brand new from the factory and uh, uh, is relatively uncommon up above the cabinet here is a 9 inch Durasig ped this is my what I call my OSM special because I received both the signal and the lenses in two separate OSM free piles so it's in good shape because I repainted it gloss black and I swapped the old worn out poly hand man lenses for the nice glass lenses you see so I put lipstick on a pig essentially so um, but overall it looks it's a nice little signal it's small lightweight and uh, compact so not a bad signal to have in the collection here's that doghouse again this is a TCT doghouse this actually came from a buddy of mine uh, who operates the Traffic Signal Museum website. So he sold this to me when he and I went down to one of the OSMs in recent years. So all I did with this is swap the arrows to the right. They originally, uh, my buddy had them in the left uh, sections. So I moved them over to the right so that they can work in tandem with my flashing yellow arrow. So that's uh, the doghouse and it's an 8 inch doghouse which is even better it fits way better in that spot than a massive 12 inch doghouse would um, and then my buddy he custom fabbed the brackets 
so that they can fit together in a in a tighter spot. So pretty cool. Down here is a newer signal or the latest signal in my collection. This is another OSM free pile special. This is a McCain fiberglass pad with an EOI LED uh, module in it. This works in sequence or it's synced up with the countdown pad over here. So push the button here in a few seconds or minutes or so it will change to a walk signal. The, the hand man pad, the hand man module was in just sitting in a free pile in a junk pile so I grabbed that and I bought uh, the housing from another collector and I kind of put it together right on site and there's the walk and the walk up here you can see they're working together you'll notice that the flashing yellow arrow is not sequencing um, because when the pad is sequencing the flashing is omitted so that gives me a second to show how that works so you'll see the pad finish the cycle and then the flashing should begin there it is so those are the pads and then the last two signals here I saved the best two for last are my four-way heads um, this signal is a GE four-way that served at the intersection of Clay and Pearl Street in Coldwater, Michigan, down the southwest side of the state. Um, I bought this and the signal it was hanging with back in 2016, and I sold the other one to a local collector, so I kept this one. And there's a picture of the same signal that's in my collection while it was in service. And the last signal here that we're going to hit is a Krauss Heinz Type M four-way which is uh, was my first of the two four-ways to get and I restored it back in 2006 so I've had this for quite a few years too and the four-ways actually operate independently of the uh, rest of the signals so I've got essentially two cycling displays here I've got the main and cross streets or side street displays here and then you can see the four ways will operate on their own pattern so we'll we'll leave it at that we'll watch one sequence of the four ways go through and call it a day alright thanks for watching